Well, in my family, it never quite feels like Christmas until it's early December and we're over at my parents' house. And we're getting out all the lights and the extension cord and the string. And even though it's freezing cold outside, we get a neighbor that comes by and he rolls down his window and he sees my dad in the front yard. He sticks his whole head out and with a smile on his face, he says, Jonathan, I just love your book. Your, you, your <laughs> and we've gotten this enough where my dad just says, oh, the lighted Christmas balls. Thanks. We, we love them, too. <laughs> About 17 years ago, my family unknowingly started the lighted Christmas ball craze in Greensboro. And it's grown from California to Sweden, from Texas to Michigan, and, and my humble estimation is produced about 10,000 lighted Christmas balls. And like all great revolutions, it started with a letter from the Garden Club. <laughs> <laughs> we would like to encourage and invite all neighbors to decorate in the traditional Williamsburg style of tasteful greenery and all white lights. Well, if you know my father, that seemed less like an encouragement or an invitation and more like a challenge. <laughs> My sister was home from college and she had seen these grapevine spheres, spheres wrapped in lights and they were at some shopping center. She said, I want to make these. And so we went down to Holiday Hardware and picked up some chicken wire. And if you're making a shopping list, it's actually called poultry netting. And <laughs> we made our first three lighted Christmas balls that year and they looked something like this. They were homely little structures and we put them low in the branches of the dogwood tree. And that first year we didn't get a single nasty letter from the garden club. <laughs> well the next year we made about six or seven more and I had the idea we need to get these high up in the trees. And since I was in high school and I had ready access to a potato gun, I said that was the best way. <laughs> And so we, uh, I took a lemon and put a string through it and stuffed it down in a potato gun with a little bit of white rain hairspray. Kablam! We had our first propelled, uh, propelled uh, lighted ball and it was 50 feet into the canopy and it was beautiful. Again, for your shopping list, here are the parts you'll need. <laughs> with this without a couple of neighbors asking about it and so the, the next year uh, we had uh, the neighbor across the street ask and then another neighbor asked and, and so we started teaching them we would just teach them one-on-one -on -one and we would have them over or we'd go over to their house and it was amazing to see the different neighbors and how they would make their own potato guns and then they came up with their own instruments for getting them up in the air some would get out the fishing line and, and fishing rod and some would get out the bows and arrows and it was amazing to see how the light would go from our little street corner out into the neighborhood. Well, we did this uh, for a few years, and then we got a little tired of teaching each person one-on-one, -on -one, and so we decided to have a workshop. We decided to have a lighted Christmas ball making party. So we went to Lowe's and we bought all the chicken wire poultry netting that they had, and we went to Target and bought out all their lights, and we set up shop we put a little donation bucket on the table just to recoup our costs. I even drew some directions. And it was amazing. That first year we made about 100 lighted Christmas balls at this little workshop. And so we did that for a number of years. And it was amazing to see the neighbors that had, had maybe never talked across the street. But once you get them across the table and they're messing with this lighted Christmas ball and they say, I don't know how this is ever going to look like that. <laughs> that they start to open up and they start to create community. And so we would do this and it was an amazing community building event. Well, for our fifth year, we decided let's really do this upright. Let's have a block party. And we, um, we got the city of Greensboro to shut down Ridgeway Drive. We had a full spread of food. We had a band. We probably even had a committee. And it was, it was a divine afterthought that our neighbor across the street, Marlene, she said to my parents, hey, Jonathan and Ann, what do you think about um, putting a, doing a food collection, a little food drive for the party? And my parents said, sure, well, I don't see why not. And so we grabbed my grandfather's four by six foot trailer and we put it in the street and, um, and that 
first year, we um, it, it got filled up. Look, after the at the end of the day, it looked a little something like this, and we were just surprised, and, and we thought this was fun. And um, then Marlene, or Saint Marlene, as we've called her now, <laughs> she had her next great idea. She said, "Hey, Jonathan and Ann, what do you think about just putting the trailer in the front yard for the whole month?" And um, to which my dad said, oh, you mean in the traditional Williamsburg style of trailers? <laughs> in the front yard for the whole month. And so we did. <laughs> and that first year we collected over $700 and nearly 3,000 pounds of food just from the traffic that would go by our little street corner. And we've done it every year since. Every December, we get out of that trailer and we put it in the front yard. <laughs> we put it out for all of December, and a whole lot of January, <laughs> and to the Garden Club chagrin, a whole lot of February too. <laughs> We've outfitted it with, uh, with a tent to keep the food dry. We've outfitted it with lights. One year we had a, a, a giant arrow, lighted arrow pointing down that said, go get here. <laughs> and it mysteriously quit working one day. <laughs> Um, not associated with the Garden Club at all, I'm sure. <laughs> and uh, this year we had our uh, biggest year yet. We had a friend say, hey, can I put on a charity run through the neighborhood at night? And we said, sure, as long as it's done tastefully. And he said, great, I'll call it the running of the balls. And so... <laughs> Had, uh, we had some other friends say, could we have food collection points in front of our houses? And we said, sure, that, that sounds great. So we had five different food collection points uh, throughout our neighborhood and actually in a, in a neighborhood uh, north of town too. And as, as surprising as these uh, numbers are, over the last five years, we've, uh, we've helped raise nearly $50,000 and over 30,000 pounds of food, which, if you do the math, that's roughly 350,000 meals that we think. <laughs> that we think would have just stayed in pantries and stayed in wallets and pocketbooks. Um, but because of this trailer and these little lights, uh, made its way to those that needed it. As great as those numbers are, it's the little stories that, that really get me. Every week we find notes in our trailer uh, from people thanking us and it, it's thanking the neighborhood. Um, it's my five-year-old who, is, she's grown up thinking this is just what people do. And <laughs> she has helped uh, unload the trailer um, every time we, we take a load. And she says that she does it because it's helping her homeless friends, she calls them. Um, it is the 13 year old who decided to have her birthday party at the lighted Christmas ball party and instead of asking for Uggs and iPods she asked her friends to bring canned food and to show you the compounding effect of this we had a neighbor who heard, out, uh, heard about this girl he said she and you have restored my faith in teenage humanity here is another $300 for the food drive uh, we, we have heard of a number of stories of cancer patients who go and visit the hospital right at the end of our street and they've pushed out their chemotherapy appointments into the late afternoon so they can drive down Ridgeway Drive and pick up a little bit of hope on the way home. All of this from these little lights and the little dinky trailer. Uh, and you think about your passions and think about how they grow. Think through how we gave away this idea. If we had kept it on our street corner, we would have just been those crazy smiths with their lights. And now we're those crazy smiths with those lights that have shared it with the neighborhood. And if we didn't have St. Marlene that said, let's make this about bigger than just our little corner and just our neighborhood. Let's make this about something we care about. That's when it really got legs. It took off. I also want you to think through taking hold of your idea, but not too much. We got all the lights and we got all the wires and 
we drove the directions, and my dad has taken about 95 truckloads in the back of his Suburban down to the food bank. But we were never the sphere police. If you drive down Ridgeway Drive in the daylight, you will see a lot of lighted cones and lighted cylinders, lighted marshmallow-looking things. <laughs> but not one less mouth has been fed or one less heart been warmed because of an ill-shaped lighted Christmas object. <laughs> And so in the spirit of the Sunset Hills Garden Club, I would like to encourage and invite you out to come see the lighted Christmas balls. Bring your family, bring your friends, raid your pantry, and bring your checkbook. And when you get to that traditional Williamsburg-style trailer in the front yard, would you please stick your whole head out the window and yell as loud as you can, Hey, Jonathan, I just love your... Lighted Christmas balls. <laughs> Thank you.